you know, Beast was the guy. You know, he and John were the two options on our our team as far as offense was concerned. Um, you know, I made some comments during an interview that I think were kind of taken out of context. I said it, so I have to own it. Mm. However, you know, it, the question was about Patrick as a leader, things of that nature. And I, there's no way that I can say Patrick Ewan was not a leader. I, I just feel like, and it didn't come across this way maybe, that they're different kind of leaders. And if you look at a vocal leader, then he's in everybody's face. That was Oak. Oak was always in everybody's face. He was always holding guys accountable, you know, just, just making sure that you're ready to go night in and night out. Patrick led by example. And I, I, I just think that when people talk leadership, they always think that the best player has to be the all-out leader. Just not, not true. Um, case in point, you, you think that if you're the leader, you got to take the, win, the, the shot at the end of every game. Not true. You have to make the right play at the end of games. That's what basketball is all about. How many times have you seen the best players, Case, make the right play opposed to making the basket? Right. And in 94, I just thought there were not enough plays being made by our best players opposed to trying to make the basket. And I really want to want to want to emphasize and, and clear that up. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I was trying to say. Maybe I wasn't clear on it that particular moment when I was being interviewed at the time. But Patrick was a leader by example. I mean, I love Beast. We we we, we have a friendship. We have a relationship. And it was not to try to belittle him in any kind of way that he wasn't a great player, that he didn't have a great career. I mean, heck. Or hell, the guy was an all-star, five, six, eight, ten plus years, all pro a couple of times. And actually, we we played in the finals together. So what Patrick was to, to the New York Knicks spoke for itself. He doesn't have to explain to anybody what, what he was as a player. And mm. his career was uh, second to none to most centers that ever played the game. That's exactly right. He he was a warrior, and uh, it was our interview with Oakley where Oakley, you know, said Young yeah. was was high maintenance that kind of set off a yeah. firestorm. And yeah, what does uh, that? that and, and I love yeah. Oak, but that doesn't have anything to do with leadership. Mm -hmm. You think these players today aren't high maintenance guys? Of course they are. Every, you know, you you have to make things as comfortable as possible for your best player. And mm -hmm. if you tell me that people say you treat everybody the same or coaches or organizations treat everybody the same, I would tell you, Casey, that that's a lie. That's just not true. Mm -hmm. uh, superstars deserve supreme um, attention, mm -hmm. and they earn that. They earn that right. Patrick earned that right as a player. And like I said, I just think that when you're really the guy, mm -hmm. you have to make other people around you better. And if you look at the finals – in the bubble that just passed, Anthony Davis, LeBron James. Well, the one night Anthony Davis hit the bucket, and there were a lot of nights that other guys stepped up for the Lakers team. And to me, that's really how they were successful. Miami didn't have enough. Houston didn't have enough. Who else did they play? The Nuggets, whoever. Mm -hmm. They just didn't have enough because I think LeBron and Anthony Davis together, they're going to they're gonna be the kings. They're going to end up better than everybody else. But I just, when I look at LeBron, I look at Michael Jordan, how many times did he find Steve Kerr for the open shot, John Paxson for mm -hmm. the open shot? I just feel like if we had played that way a little bit more, then we would have been champions in 94 against a very good Rockets team. Can't take anything away from them. But we all we needed was to win one out of two games. And we would – would have been crowned champions and I would still be in New York hanging out with you, not on Zoom. You know what I mean? That's right. So that's, that's right. You got to make the right play. That, yeah. That's what I think everybody gets confused. People think the best player is always supposed to make the shot. Mm -hmm. You know, Patrick missed that layup against the Pacers uh, in the, the following year in 95. Mm -hmm. And everybody is like, oh, my God, oh, my God. But that's how it happens. I mean, you you're not going to always make that shot. 
But if you make the right play, you're going to be more successful, in my opinion, just from my experiences as a player in the league. You being the newcomer on the team, did you feel like it was a challenge for you trying to, yeah. you know, rein them in a little bit as a floor general? Or do you feel like just yeah. some superstars, that they're just going to do what they do? Well, Patrick is going to do what he does because he's a scorer. He's a back-to-the-back player. He can face up. Patrick had a unique skill ability. He could handle the ball decent enough to create his own shot. And, I mean, again, the guy's a Hall of Famer, so he doesn't have to explain anything to us. But what I tried to do was just help him to recognize that if there are two or three guys on you, then that means somebody else is open. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get a more quality offensive opportunity than you would trying to shoot over one or two guys or two and a half guys, whatever the case might be. See, again, that's where, and I'm not, Patrick is a very intelligent basketball player, but that's where winning and losing separates itself. If you make the play, you know, if you make the game easy for somebody else, then down the stretch of a game case, if you would, it's going to be easier for you. If he finds me open, finds John open, Hubert Davis, Greg Anthony, Whoever it might be, if he finds us a couple of times and we make the defense pay by knocking down a few baskets from the perimeter, then that's going to free him up to be the dominant person that he was. And, um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. man. This is what? That was 94, yeah. so we're talking <laughs> 26 time. years yeah. ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it took me a long time. I'm not going to lie to you, man, to get over not winning in 94 because I think we were the better team against the Rockets Elijah Wan, Kenny Smith, Sam Cassell, Robert Ory, Mario Ellie, those guys deserved it because again, they went back to back, but nobody, I'll have a hard time being convinced that we weren't the best team at that particular moment, just didn't find a way to make enough plays and, and, and bring the cohesion to the point where, we 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 were gonna uh, we were gonna play for each other. I, I didn't think that we played for each other mm. enough, and Houston did. That's why they were crowned champions. Very, very interesting, and certainly want to touch on six and seven uh, in a in a bit. But just leading up to the finals in that playoff run, 